Verbal and worked for a long time at the dialysis clinic. And of course, most of you know that she was preceded in her death by in her death uh, by her son Andy. And today uh, we grieve along with her husband Randy and parents Jay and Nancy Mount, and and of course her brother Greg and sister-in-law Glenda and her niece Becky Mount and other family members. We grieve with them today. I was talking with Nancy the other day, and she shared with me that Pam had quoted a verse of scripture when she realized that this cancer was upon her and was unsure of what the future was, but she knew where her future was, is. It was Philippians 1.21. It says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That either way, she was going to be a winner. It's a great song by that title, by the way. I'm a winner either way. Pam is a winner today. She knew Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. She, she lived the blessings that that, 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 was, that was applied to her because of her profession of Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And now she's realized her reward in heaven because she accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. So she lived in Christ and she lived a life here in Him. And now she's died and she has gained her reward. But today I, I just want to for all of us, remind us that we can all find comfort in the things of the Lord. We can all find comfort in, in the Scripture. And uh, I want to share some Scripture with you and then sing a song. I might sing another song if the Lord leads me to. I, I brought two to sing today. It's a real honor for me to even participate in this service. And I thank you, uh, John and Randy, for allowing me to do this. But over in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we find this, that we find comfort in the return of Christ. And I hope this will bring comfort to you, family. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Talked a lot about hope in the last few days with the family. And how you would cope with something like this without the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. I don't know how you do that. It'd be tough for me as a minister to help somebody who has no hope of where their loved one is. But we have hope today because we know where Pam is. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him, will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. That we who are alive and remain till the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Listen to this great promise. The Lord himself will descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, I love this, and thus we shall always, always be with the Lord. Great promise, John. Isn't that right? Amen. So Paul goes on to say to the church at Thessalonica, comfort one another with these words. I pray that you'll be comforted, family, friends, with those words today. And how could we not come to this place and find words of comfort without reading from the Psalms? Particularly Psalms 4 through 6. Yea, though I, Psalms 23, 4 through 6. Yea, though I walk through the valley the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again, Christ promised to us, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I pray today that you find comfort in his promises. And then uh, a passage of scripture that's read often at times like this that brings such great remembrance to all of us because we have such um, promise in the fact that Christ has made preparation for us, for you, for me. He has placed a mansion in glory for us and prepared a place for us. That's why he went ahead to prepare a place for you and for me. Let me just remind you of these, these one, this wonderful promise and this hope. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Great promise that Jesus Christ made to us that he, that he died. That's why he died on the cross. So we might have the promise of heaven. But Pam would want me to, to read the rest of this story. The most important part of this passage of Scripture, which we, found, we find in verse 6. Many of you know this verse. Some of you may not. And it's not my words. It's the words of Jesus Christ. And it's truth. And it's a truth that you must realize and deal with yourself, as Pam did. And it's this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And this cuts to the core. No one comes to the Father but by me. Had Pam not accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior, has Handy not accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, they wouldn't be together in heaven today. <coughs> because of that promise. I saw Carolyn. There's Carolyn thinking about Buddy today. What a reunion they must have had the other day. And a reunion we'll all have who know Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Pam accepted that preparation and that promise from Jesus Christ. He is the way and the truth and the life. And then today I hope that we can find peace in Christ today. Over in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 6 and 7. You know this too. John, I know you know this. John and I have been friends a long time. We used to play golf together. You've not really seen much unless you've seen golf, uh, John swing a golf club. <laughs> I mean, he puts his foot in that bucket every time, and it goes right down the middle. We used to talk about things of the Lord. We'd be out on the golf course. That's why I, I love being around John and Nancy because they just love to talk about the Lord and his promises. And I just know them to, to be the, I know they worry, but they just never seem like they do. They're just always looking forward and, and hoping in the Lord. And so this, I thought about this first thinking about you and Nancy, John. Be anxious for nothing. Now, how tough is this? But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be, be, be made known to God. To be anxious for nothing, but to give thanks for everything. So that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. So I pray for you, family, John, Randy, Greg, that you find peace in the Lord, that you not be anxious. We know where she is. We can take comfort in the fact that Pam's with the Lord. What a great life she lived here. How many people she made happy. How many people she served. Oh, what a servant's heart she had. She wanted to make sure everybody else was taken care of before she took care of herself. And you too can have that.